One of the things I thought we'd talk about tonight was this issue of what exactly is the nature of this body of information that we're looking at. And the reason I thought of it was because of the insight I just wrote. Okay, I wrote this insight. And someone asked a question on it, and I thought it would be worthwhile to, to, um, to deal with that question. Okay? So, what this insight is titled is details. And it's talking about the fact that in every, in determining ethics, you really have to look at the details. And that's the way I start off the insight. By the way, for the, for the, I should mention for the purposes of people on camera or watch this on the Kushtu, if they're interested in this insight and the insights, the insights are emailed or you know, but generally we, we send them up by email from the initial office every week, almost every week. Um, so if people are interested in that, then they should go to the initial website and sign up to, uh, to get the emails. And um, same with you guys. If you guys want to get this every week, just give me your email address or whatever. Okay. Anyways, so the point is, is and there's a form you sign up with on the on the on the on the website. Okay. The point is like this: is that the case is found it's a, a very subtle question that that is asked in regard to. Um, Eliezer's encounter with Rivka, right? Eliezer show, uh, shows up with Rivka and so forth and so forth. And what happens is, is he basically said, who gives me water and gives me camels water and so forth, all this stuff. With it. But the point is, is the issue arises that Rivka gives water to Eliezer before she gives water to Eliezer's camels. Okay? And th that that's common sense. We'd say, hey, you want some water? And just and, and just saying that she's a a caring person. Hey, you got water for you, and we'll also yeah, give water. Yeah, <laughs> we'll give water to the to the to the animals as well. That would seem to be. See a, a guy, he's parched, whatever. Hey, I'll help you get you some water, and then take care of the animals and so forth. Thing is, is the Muggen of Ram in Orachaim, um, one sixty seven eighteen makes an interesting statement. See, he says that <coughs> we learn the law here that in terms of water, she have water to human beings before animals. Now, why is that significant? Because the Gemara and Brachus is saying it's like this. It's Gemara and Brachus on Memon and Aleph, 40a. It's a very interesting law. The Gemara there is talking about um, Things that are hefsix in in brachas. So it's talking about if you made if you made the bracha of a mosi and you spoke before you ate bread. So it basically says if you made the bracha and you spoke, you got to repeat the bracha. But if the if the speaking is no is in, is no gaya to your reading, then you're allowed to to um, and then you don't have to you don't have to say over the bracha. Like an example for B for B, if it, if you sit there and say, bring me salt, I need salt for for because you're about to say a mosi, because the halacha also applies if you wash and you don't talk when you're washing salt. So but even if you say a mosi and say yeah, salt, then you're you're actually allowed to say salt. Even when usually uh, uh uh you're actually allowed to say salt. There's a very fascinating story I once heard. I heard it was shame of Ron Soloveitchik, but the point is, is that's why I heard the story. But let's not, you know. But don't, don't, don't say it's him or whatever. But he had a story like this. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. He, he, there's a story like this from Ron Soloveitchik that he went to wash, and he's walking out to wa from washing. He saw a person he hasn't seen in a long time. He was walking by this person he hadn't seen in a long time. Okay, and the guy's like, you know, quick to say hello. So, supposing Ron said to him, said, listen, I just washed, and she, I really can't talk to you now, but um, I'll, I'll go say a and I'll come back after you. In other words, in other words he, he, he was, he was involved with him saying, I'm, I have to say the bracha. It wasn't him saying hello, but, you know, anyways, but the point is... That wasn't half saying. That wasn't half saying. That's, that's the way the story goes, but don't, <laughs> don't quote Ron Salvatore coming. But the point is, it's the way I heard the story. Anyways, but the fact is, 
is, is that you are allowed to talk if it's no okay to what's happening here. So, so if you need so and so forth. So the Gemara says, if you if you if you haven't if if you need to feed your animals, you're allowed to say, go feed the animals. Okay, okay before before you before you 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 eat bread. Why is that? Be because even if you wash first, even, you wash first, even, even if you said a motzi first, Moore's actually talking about a motzi from her. Mm -hmm. So it says, you know, you say because you're supposed to feed your animals before you eat. Mm -hmm. So in terms of feeding, you're supposed to feed your animals before you eat. So, but the mother of Ram derives from the fact that 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 that. Um, that um, Rivka gave water to Eliezer, to Eliezer before giving water to Eliezer's camels. He writes the fact that that's a din in food. They have to feed your animals first. But in terms of drinking water, right, human beings go first. Why? It's uh, a very good question. Yeah. Why? Okay, so people try to save the question. So the Torah Tamima asks the question, among others, and so forth. So. There's there, there's two approaches in the uh, I would say to define it. The Magen Ram makes a distinction between water and 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 food. There's others, and uh, such as the 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 um, Chaim who says that the, the the distinction is not between water and food. Distinction is in terms of sakana. Says. Um, Eliezer really needed water, it was the kind of animal already. So for obviously, and that human being goes first, and then Makam Sakana, within the animals. The, 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 but it's not a din in water and food, it's a din in Sakana. The, the, um, the, um, Torah Tamima says, it's really a din in Sar says, when a person with food, you're not really ravenously hungry, you're not really, you know, food, okay, it's time to eat, so it's not like you're really in pain in terms of being hungry, see, the animals go first, but, but in terms of thirst, usually when you're thirsty, it's cause, when you drink water, it's usually because you're thirsty, so there's pain involved, so you make a being goes first, so he says, really, it's an idea of Tsar, and therefore he says, it's re it's really a possibility that um, that um, um, uh, that he thinks therefore if your person's really really hungry like he's already like he's in pain from the hunger then you feed the human being first right more before the before the animal he says I haven't seen this brought down the halach anywhere so he says he's not so sure about that. But in terms of the Magad of Ram statement, the Magad of Ram statement is food and water. What about that distinction of food and water? So the Yad Ephraim, who's one of the commentaries on, 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 on Or Chaim, on Shulchan Aruch, he says like this, he says, the difference is, is that for food, you need a bracha from a Kodesh Baruch because you need to have the, the, the rain and you need to have the foods taken care of and so forth and so forth. So who says that you are zocha to the food. It might be that your animals. Kodesh Baruch wants to feed the animals. Therefore, he created crops. Therefore, just what happens to human beings, even though they weren't really on their own zocha to the food, they get it because of the animals. But with water, water is a stream. It's available. You know, it's not. It's it's not. It's not a thing where where it's the. It's maybe the need of the animals, and you have to be concerned about the source of the human being. So he says, so water, human being goes first because water is just there. But for crops to grow, for crops to really grow, developing, that needs that needs active and active sort of schuyas, and maybe that's why, maybe it's because of the animals that you are able to get food. Anyway, that's his answer. Okay, but the point is, is that's a classical concept in the Magad of Ram, that for food animals go first. Okay, for water, human being goes first. And it's derived from this one case. The one case is it's derived, he learns it from this case. It's not the only necessary place why it's derived from here, but it's learned from this case that that halacha is that in bracha so you're supposed to feed the animals first. But Rivka didn't feed the animals first. She gave water to 
to um, Eliezer. to Eliezer first. Therefore, you see that when it comes to water, you don't have to give the water to the animals first. Okay. Any questions on that on that proof? Think about it for a sec. Yeah. The halacha is okay. The Pumagorim of Brachos, he should feed the animals first. Right. But Rivka didn't do that. With water, she fed the an the, 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 the human being first. Exception in this case. Well, yes. Yeah, so should we learn from this case? Water, it's it's just saying it's different than food. Right. That's what the Book of Rome says. Is there any any issue about this? Why how he derive you know how he could derive it? How did you write that? Like water is. Uh, because Rivka gave water to the animals first. Halacha is you give to the animals first. She wasn't Jewish. For food. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, okay. Now you're getting a little bit more into it. Wasn't she related to Abraham? She wasn't married to Yitzchak yet. She wasn't Jewish. Yes, she did the Halacha. What? Um, but she. He was wasn't lost. Jewish either. Who? Uh, Eliezer. Eliezer. Okay, that's also part of the problem. Wasn't Lenny the wisest for Avram Zankor? No, no, that was Avram Zankor, but Rivka, but, but Rivka was like was, in the family. Like, yeah, Rivka was <laughs> was a she was a niece. No, she she was an, a niece to to Avram. But come on, you're getting to it. You know, she's not Jewish. Come on. <laughs> Uh, okay, Smuggler Rum learns from this what? case, you see the water goes first. So, come on, you're what? getting it. Why she, uh, needs water to drink Rivka, maybe? No, she, 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 she was thirsty? No, she gave the water to Eliezer first. So the argument is, is that water is different because you're, because you're really be thirsty. Are you saying that but she didn't have to hold by the law yet because she wasn't a being, uh, like had to be under that ruling yeah. type of idea? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is where did this halacha come from? Where do we derive this very halacha that you're supposed to feed the animals first? So most people hold us a drobonin. Okay, good. But even if you say it's not a drobonin, it's a derisa, right? right? When was the Torah given? That way after. So there was no Durban in the Durace. So what's so the question with so the point is, for back then? Ah, so the point is, is Rivka, especially with this nice little three-year-old girl, she knows the halacha. That's my also whether she's actually. Yeah, that's right. It says that's right. It's it's right. Just but but she knows the halacha that really, really, the halacha was food that we give the animals first. Right, but since it's water, I, I, I can give Eliezer first. Okay, and she knows this halacha, right? And 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 we derive and we learn this halacha from Rivka, who 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 is not Jewish. I mean, the truth of the matter is, even the Yavos, the whole big issue, other, but they have Yavos but, weren't Jewish. But they had something. They so had a connection uh, to Avraham to learn or Shem. Yeah, so so we say we Jewish say we Jewish. say that the Yavos did the Yavos follow Torah. Right. We say the Yavos follow Torah. So you say the Imahot follow Torah. But the Rivka followed Torah before she got married to Yitzchak. But How come we don't know that Torah that they learned? They kept it just themselves and then it was like waited till later. How they learned the Torah? What well, was it that they learned? Also well, they were very close with God, God, obviously, because they had that relationship. Yeah. 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 Um, so they can probably <laughs> Like they got uh, something from was she connected to Shem Beber or no? I mean, I, did she learn by Shem and Eber? Shem Beber, she, a girl learning in the yeshiva? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's, uh, well, I'm going to be, this is on tape, I'm going to be in big trouble for this. <laughs> okay. Um, the fact is, is, is that, uh, you know, Shem and Aver was in Israel, she was outside of Israel. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, but the point is, is that, I mean, she might have learned some aspects of Torah because, I, I mean, the point is, is what was the knowledge of what we call Torah? We talked about Shem and Aver, then Torah, so what the Torah did they learn? So the question also be a human nature, what can they come to if they're so dedicating themselves to being a so good person? So hold on, Rabbi, are you saying that anything that came out, that there was, that Torah should, a Deraisa, the, the halachas we learn out the Raisa are not, aren't in effect that we learn out from the Torah after, until after Harsinai or? 
Torah is no hold on. Right there's there's, the there's Pesach. They like, call all the stuff. So, so, right so, so the question is, the question is is where do we get the idea? The Pesach is derived from the fact that the Torah says it's a command of Pesach. But they were commanded for Pesach before they got the yeah, Torah. But, so like, mess, but the fact is, I'm confused. confused. Mila, they they were just by Mila. Confused. Yeah. Mila, we don't when we make Kiddush, we don't um, and we get uh, back. We don't pass it down the table because the mitzvah is in front of you. The, wa- the water was in front. The, 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 the food was somewhere else. She I reacted and did the mitzvah that was in front of her. She, and yeah, she, that, that, that's fair. And that's the water. And, and the, other uh, and the, the water she did that, but the question is, she should have given the, uh, the, 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 the camels to water first. The halacha is you're supposed to feed the animals before you feed the person. I mean, there's other problems also. The halacha, my big problem with the, with the insight dealt with, my big problem was was that the obligation to feed the animals first is on the owner. So it's true, the owner has to feed the animals first. But Rivka wasn't the owner. She was trying to be nice to someone. So she said, hey, listen, as a human being, we need water. I'm going to give water to them, and and, and therefore I'm going to give... Uh, th- therefore, and now I'm going to give the animals afterwards, which also was a big, was it was was you know an Indian of 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 helping the animals. The fact is, what the Igros Moshe says, when Moshe Feinstein writes in the Igros Moshe, he tries to answer, and to answer this. He says because once a person has an obligation to feed the animals, if you want to give stuff to that person, you got to apply his obligations. In other words, Rivka wanted to help out Eliezer, but Eliezer had an obligation to feed his, his camels. So, you know, so slave of Abraham, was Abraham's school, but he had an obligation to, 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 to water his camels first. Therefore, Rivka t- take is should should follow the, the the direction of the person she's trying to help, and therefore she should have given that. That's what the Magen Rav learns it from. She should have given the camels first because Eliezer had an obligation to give the camels first. But it, uh, it's it's the whole issue is not so simple. But the the point is though, is that here you have a fascinating case, and it's not just this case. But here you have a fascinating case, and we're dealing with what was the nature of Torah before Har Sinai, what's the nature of Torah after Har Sinai. When you ask that question about Pesach, where does our obligation come from? By Mila, right? We don't do Mila because Avraham Ravina was Masavin in Mila. We don't not eat the Gidanasha because of what happened with Yaakov. We don't do, we don't eat the Gidanasha. We don't do Mila because the Torah was a well, in a, in a, in a, at Har Sinai was a legislative aspect of the Torah. In other words, there's a certain corporate kind of, uh, construct here where where um, you know where Sinai is really like the constitutional conference. Okay, and at this and this constitutional um, um, declaration, the, yeah, conference. Okay, this is where these constitutional laws came from. Hold on, I'm confused. So my question still stands. So what point was Deraisa? Where do we learn out the shot of what is Deraisa? Deraisa is those things which are commanded in from a Kodesh Baruch who directly Sinai. The fact is, is the way it's stated. Might be a, a a it might be in a language that looks historically. Like for example, the Mr. Puravu is mentioned in a verse connect, you know you know connected to 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 a statement to Adam and Chava. Okay, so the point is is that is that but the point is that's where the Torah writes down Puravu, but the but the legislation of it is at Har Sinai. Okay. Wait, hold on. So, um, so, so that, can you explain? Can you say that in layman's terms? They were before the Torah came out. Uh, the, from, uh, we, I mean, we, uh, our obligations, right. right? Our obligations are derived from a statement, and, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's not so simple in terms of Har Sinai or whether it's the time throughout the desert. There's a whole, a whole variety of questions. See certain mitzvahs were given after Har Sinai and so forth. So there's some, there's there there are are are, are details. But 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 to apply a legal concept, there is a time that something is legislated, right? You know, you have you have, you, have, you go you go in Congress or you go in Parliament and they have a time and this is now how you have a law come about. So in Canada, the way you have a law come about, the House of Commons has to pass it, then the Senate. Then it has to get royal, royal assent, 
Okay, and so then like it's a before law. Before that, people did maybe some of these things, but it's but not they a law. Weren't like it was okay. a law. Now, now the would fact be. is, is fact prior to Har Sinai, there may have been other laws. Avram's Avram's progeny, right, might have been Mechuyev in Mila because God or, 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 commanded Avram to mull and to have his, and have his his descendants mull. That was that was a separate command that Avram was given. But the fact is, yeah. is, is that is, yeah, yeah, there are other commands. In other words, the, the only, Harsinai is not the only time that God has commanded human beings. Okay? The, the Shemnitz is B'nai Noach, Noach was given commands, you know, after the mumble or whatever. Okay. Hold on, with um, the, even with the Shemnitz is B'nai Noach, didn't they, doesn't it only talk about the Shav Mitzvah Pnei Noach at, in later parshas anyway? No, it's in Noach. When does it start talking about Losach, Mon, Adam, Racha, Losach? That's not the Shav Mitzvah Pnei Noach, that's, that's his Sarah Sedibros. Wait, when is, when is it talking about, when's the first mention of the... Uh, in, 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 there, there are laws that are given to Noach. A person who kills someone should be, should be killed. That, that stayed in, in, in Noach. There were laws, that, like for example, you take Puravu. Puravu is only an obligation upon Jews today. Most people hold there's no mitzvah of Puravu on, on, on Jews. The vast majority of people hold there's no obligation of, of, uh, on Jews. There's no obligation not, for more Gentiles to be in the world? For, uh, from Puravu. Okay? Well, they, they don't okay. carry mitzvah. No, they do, because Shem Mitzvah they know if they carry. Uh, right? Okay, the point is, is that the statement of Peru was, was made by, was made to, uh, to Adam and Chava. And whether, or there, there's two statements, there's Peru by Adam and Chava, there's a Peru also by Noah, whether that was a statement of command. But there are people who hold that there was a Peru on non-Jews before Harsina. But for some reason, and, and this is a technical aspect of, 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 leg, of, of how Torah was legislated, the, the commandment of Purubu on non-Jews ended when Purubu only became a commandment on Jews. I mean, these are, these are all technical issues in terms of um, God's commands. In other words, what you have is, is that you have an idea that God commanded human beings prior to Har Sinai. There were commands, there were mitzvot before Har Sinai. Okay? The, the, the point is, is that there was a major, what I would call, constitutional convention of the Jewish people, which happened in Har Sinai, okay, which was a new legislation where there was legislation to Jews, and this legislation to Jews superseded to Jews any previous legislation. It also changed the nature of other legislation to non-Jews. So, for example, Mila was a commandment on, on Avram's children through Yitzhak and, uh, and Yaakov. But at Harsinai, that commandment was subsumed in a commandment of, at Harsinai, of Mila. <coughs> now, where do we learn that commandment from in terms of how it's related to us? It might be the Pasuk of Avram. But, we're, but, we, but the, the commandment is not because Avram was commandment. Commandment is because a Kodesh Baruch who included this commandment in the Torah, he gave it her Sinai. And the way he phrased it was maybe in the language of, of, of in the Pasuk connected to Avram. We get a Nasha, same thing, um, by, by the Tzukim by Yaakov, Puravu, by the Tzukim by Adam and Chava. So, so, so the point is, is that there were commands. What I'm pointing out here, though, is that that's the nature of how, comm how, how the commandments work and how, and how, and how Torah works when you say about the Doraisa, it's the commandments from God directly. Okay? And the way God has phrased those commandments is in, is in a work that is sort of a sort of interesting compilation of history and, and laws and so forth and so forth. And he, has, and he may have the statement of command in a context that seems to be in a prior to the, 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 the it might be in a context of a historical event prior to Harsina. But the, but the legislation 
the legislative uh, event happened, you know, at Har Sinai. Now, the point is, though, is that what we have here is a woman, and a, a woman acted contrary to a halacha, or seems to be contrary to halacha. Magen Avraham says there's halacha. You're supposed to feed your you're supposed to feed your animals for, first. Here you have a woman giving water to a human being first. And he says, you see from this that the, that the halacha, to feed your animal first, is only on food, it's not by water. The point is, is that you're talking about an episode, an event, that happened prior to Sinai. And you're also maybe talking about a law that only, that only may be a drabana. Okay? And the point is, is that how do you how do you deal uh, like 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 uh, why is it about just to say why does he make a point of this? Rivka gave water to 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 Eliezer before she gave water to the animals because she wasn't bound by the halacha. The same way that Jacob wasn't bound by the law of having marrying two sisters. Exactly, exactly. Okay, the fact that matters. And there, but by Jacob the the problem is is we know that the others kept. All the mitzvahs, including the rabbanos. Over here, the question is: Is you're saying Rivka kept all the mitzvahs, okay, before she was actually married to Yitzchak? Okay, I don't know. Is that is that is that what the is that what the Magavram is assuming? And also, how could they keep mitzvahs about events that would transpire in the future? Like one of the mitzvahs is to remember Yitzchak's mitzvahim. Obviously, that would only occur later on. A tremendous problem. I mean, how, the fact how could they follow the Chumash when the so Chumash so was in? How can they learn Torah right. like the Chumash if the Chumash was so, in? So what's the nature like, of the Torah? The events are a lot about his, this right. history. And, and what's, the, what's the nature of the Torah that they learned? Yeah. And you're sitting there and saying that, that, that uh, um, what, and you're saying it's by Yitzhi Yitzhi Shrine. So, so, okay, Avram knew that they were going to be, Avram was told they were going to be in, in, in Egypt, but he knew all the details. This is where you're going to get out. There's going to be a carbon pace up and so forth. So it's, it's a very strange concept what they mean by that and the fact is is that there's a lot of cases where it seems that didn't they didn't fall the halachas the you know Yaakov marrying two wives but there's other cases of that so the point is is that but people try to work but with the with the avos it's pretty straightforward the avos falls over but you're going to say that the answer is is that Rivka also kept Rabbanans when she's still not married to Yitzchak is that the is that what you're saying here now, even if, and the Mugger of going to learn this, but the fact of the matter is, he's taking this event as a Dabar Pashat. He's saying, Rivka did this, and we can make the, uh, and he's going to make a derivation of halacha that water is different than food. It's a very interesting, a very th interesting thing that he's doing. He's saying halacha. And the, 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 what you're really finding out from all this is that this body of information that we call Torah, that we analyze and so forth, that we analyze to try and understand, you know, the, the, the God's, God's directed to us, is that the information is not as, um, is not as, I'm trying to write to find the right word, it's not as, I wouldn't say it's straightforward or whatever, but the information sometimes exists outside of its historical context. The, the, it seems to be that what the way I look at it is that somehow, since this episode is in Torah, okay, even we're, we're not necessarily saying we're, we're not challenging the historical authenticity of the statement, but we're sort of saying that. It's not that we're recreating historical accuracy of this event, okay? What we're, what we're saying is from this event, we can use it in our analysis. And, and there's some aspects of, of, of our analysis of the Torah where the facts that exist in this corpus of information that we are, that we are to analyze is not necessarily tied to what you would call historical reality, or 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 or, 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 um, um, or what you'd say is um, 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 
what do you call it, like, like, like detailed reality. See, w w what I'm trying to say is, is that in a certain way, there is, there is a, a context of Torah which is on the Pshat level, the most, the most straightforward understanding is you read it as you read a history book. Okay? And on some level, it's like a, it's like a, 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 you look at the stories, you read it as a story and say this happened, that happened, so forth and so forth. Okay? Then the question where emerges is it to be told literally or is it to be seen allegorically? Okay, and that's and that's one question. Was the, was the story really happen, or the story didn't necessarily happen? Okay, like for example, um, the Rambam says that the story of 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 um, uh, Bilam's donkey is, uh, that's not a, that's not a story. It was a dream. Okay, he has reasons for saying that. The point is, is that, but the story is a story as a as a story. Then there's another aspect that we look at in terms of the information that we find in Torah where it's not that it's confined to the the story as part of the story it's that the 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 information portrayed almost exists in its own vacuum mm -hmm. okay and what you have here is a statement of the Torah that says water was given to the animals before uh, to the human being before the animals, and it's it's not dealing with it as a historical reality. How could Rivka do this? How could do this? Yeah, Rivka do this? It's sort of it's sort of like it's a statement, and that statement is dealt with in its own vacuum as a statement. What do you mean by vacuum? Like within that time zone, it or applies within that concept itself, within that idea itself. Water being given to a human being for animals. How do you relate that to this other law? Mm -hmm. Not, not, not that really. It should be related, or yeah, it is because it's part of the corpus. Therefore, it can be it can be developed as as part of that of that analysis. It, in other words, it's not a question whether it's historically true or not. Even if it was historically true. Okay, are you really saying that Rivka went through this analysis and Rivka knew there would be this drabun in the future and so forth and so forth? Well, That's if it's a true, not but true it didn't happen, then why? Because since it's why because the, it the information the information is thrown into Torah, therefore by itself it becomes information. In other words, it becomes part of the of the of the information, the details that we are we are to use to the try to figure for out it, or 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 we are to use it in trying to understand um, the system. In other words, in other words it, it's almost like it's a, it's a fact that, that is not in terms of the historical um, implications of the fact itself. It's a fact and it's a fact that we can that we are to consider in our analysis of Torah. Even Jorbanans, the rices, and so forth and so forth. It's sort of thrown out. And therefore, there's an idea okay, how do you deal with this? Now, you don't just deal with it like, well, you find this a lot, for example, I find it a lot, that we don't know when Jorbanans were legislated. Okay, we, we don't know the exact year Jorbanans were legislated. You have certain indications of when Jorbanans were legislated. Like you, have, you have a case by. Uh, by bats on Shabbos, where where there's a mention of, of a Tana, he's a Tana who 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 bathed on Shabbos, and I say how could he do it? And the answer is because Xerus Drabon wasn't existent then. Okay, that 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 that's a that's a straightforward answer. Okay. Um, What's with the bats? Bats. Bath. 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 Yeah, bath. <laughs> but the point is, it's a lot of times. You have, even with Drabonans, and you have a question, how could this Navi do this? How could this, how could this, and the, and the simple answer could be, because there wasn't a Gazera yet, right? But, but, the, but, but you find the trend not to just say there wasn't a Gazera yet. There was a trend to try and say, this is information, let's try and work with this information. And, and what, 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 you're, what you're basically are left up with is the fact that the Torah information, it's not so tied to 
historical um, reality in, in, in its fullest sense in terms of when was this legislated, when was it not legislated, it's almost brought out in the realm of ideas and sort of thrown out like that. But so in the realm of ideas... I mean, it seems problematic then to come up with an idea that's saying this isn't necessary historically because it's happened, uh, not necessarily actually happened that way. Or it's, 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 the th point is, like is I'm not... telling a person a lie, but, but in order to get understanding the of something. The fact is, is, that, is that Rivka gave water to Eliezer first. Um, if I tried to understand this in terms of historical reality, I'd have to postulate that Rivka followed the Torah, right? The same way as we say the Abbas follows Torah, whatever that means in terms of following Torah. Why would we conclude and, and that? Well, that's a metric that says that the Abbas, but that the Abbas falls away. So the first thing is, what but does it she mean? Wasn't necessarily with them at that right. Time. So the first thing is, what does it mean that the Abbas follow Torah? What does that mean? You've already asked that question in terms of mm -hmm. how, Pesach and other things like that, right? Okay. And then, and then, and then Rivka follow Torah, even before she got married to Yitzchak, right? And not only that, but she was following a drabanim. Which wasn't even geyser yet. Well, even though the Medrash says that 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 that, that says the Elvis followed Torah, oh, they also followed the Rabbanans. Okay, so so the point is, is there's issues in terms of how do we understand this and how do we understand this idea of Torah. The same they question is what Shem Beiber was that this is Torah. They didn't know that, that it's. So that, that it's a, that's what a that's abundant is because it was. But but that but that, that that's happened. a question in its own right. What does that mean? They what does that mean? Things. They could, what, you know. Whatever it means, and whatever it means. The Gaudish Baruch will tell them this, how do they know it, and stuff like that. They and had made that, a greater wisdom ability back Right, then. right. That, that, that's, that's its own question. But aside from that question, okay, I'm not even getting to that question. I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to deal with the question that Rivka know, know this in Torah, because Rivka, even before she was married, she followed Torah. I mean, is that, is that, what I'm saying is, though, is that as a statement, okay, okay, in the Chumash, we have a statement that that Rivka gave water to animals first. We have another concept in Torah. You're supposed to give the animals first, okay. So the point is, aside from historical placement, once a drabanan, once pri prior to Harsin and stuff like that, you have these two con concepts. And the point is, is, is that how do you deal with these two concepts in their own, in their own self, in their own, in their own self-contained idea, and therefore the idea is brought out that I th I'm not talking from historical reality and whether Rifkin knew this or not knew this. Is the fact is I'm trying. What I'm trying to say is that in terms of understanding the Torah as having information on proper ethical behavior, <coughs> right? How do I deal with where with, with two conflicting concepts, even though I can answer that conflict through some his, by, by placing history and, and so forth and so forth? But how do I deal with the con with the concept in itself? And so that's the difference between water and food. Right, and that and that's and that's and that's what the Magavram is saying here, right. as a conceptual concept. Now that's a very interesting concept in terms of understanding Torah. I'm confused. So what does this what does this teach us? You th th there's a certain point where 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 what you're dealing with is the Torah is how the Torah presents the concept, maybe in yeah. terms of historical perspective, historical story, and so forth and so forth. But when you take it out of its historical concept, uh, historical context, you're left with the concept. This is forget the historical context. What you have is there's a concept, feed your animals first. Right. There's a concept with water, okay? You, you, the, 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 the human being was, was given water before the animals. You can figure out all the different roots and we can answer it all historically and, and give things. Well, the Xer didn't happen then, but the point is just as concepts, just in terms of the concepts, is there a way of balancing out these concepts? Why is that? And, and that's and that's what the Magen of Ram is saying. He's saying water is different than food. So, but he's okay. So you so you're I'm confused because conceptually you're asking if there's a way to balance out these these ideas I have, and then the answer 
is what the, the Mogan of Arm said, just analyze the situation based on what it was. No, he's, he's saying basically the concept is supposed to feed, feed animals first. So now that here we have, we have a concept of giving water to a human being first. Okay? Just conceptually, is there a way that I can understand why with animals you give food, you give the, you, you, with food you give to animals first, with water you give to human beings first? No, so that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking no. conceptually the idea when you have a case where it's just one area, one thing, and area, not the other thing. You said you're not supposed to look at you do so you do look at the details that that, that helps the, 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 the detail okay the, the the you do look at the details but the thing what, what I'm trying to say is is that sometimes um, in other words the idea of reality may have different different um, when we talk in terms of reality, right. there are different dimensions to reality. One aspect of reality is historical reality. Okay, so we're told a historical event, and we're saying, "Hey, has a historical event happened?" And so forth and so forth. And there's questions from the historical idea of the historical event, and 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 you can ask those type of questions. So we say that the the Avos kept Torah. Historically, how do they know what Torah was? Right. What did they follow? How do they know the Jerobonans? That That's looking at it in a specific way of trying to see it in terms of historical, what you would call historical reality. Okay. That's one concept. So if you're looking at this story, you'd ask the question of historical reality of the, how, how, did, how, did, how would Rivka know you have to feel the animals first? How would she know Torah? Okay, and and if you say, and, and in any event, this was before Torah. Who said she was bound to following Torah? Ah, and if you want to say, well, the Abbas kept Torah. Well, who said that the Mahos kept Torah before they, before they got married to the Abbas? So historical reality. If you're looking at it from historical reality, you have a whole bunch of questions and answers. How can you say? Maybe Rivka just wasn't bound by the Salaha or or, 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 or the Magda of Ramas if mean, she's bound to the Salaha, but historical that's historical reality type questions. Right. Okay. On the flip side. But there's another aspect of of what we call reality. Okay? Yeah. And that is the conceptual side. Uh -huh. Where the historical statements it's not whether they're true or not. I'm not going to get into his history, whether it's true or not. Okay. We have cases where we're told events and we're told that they're allegorical. That, 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 that you don't necessarily, this is what happened. The Rambam said that Bilam's donkey didn't talk. Right. Okay. So therefore it's only a dream. Yeah. By Midrashim, we can sit there and say the Midrash is allegorical. Right. It doesn't mean that, 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 therefore it doesn't mean that it's actually his, a real historical event. Yeah. The point is, though, is that there's another side to any statement that comes out of Torah. And that is the conceptual side. What's the idea here? What's the idea that's being presented? And then, in the corpus of Torah, how do you deal with the ideas? So, we have a Drabbanan that says, feed the animals first. Whenever the Rabbanan were going to the Rabbanan, okay, good. But, but the idea was, it's proper to feed animals first, okay? Then you have a statement that Rivka gave water to the animals first. So it's proper to give, sorry, to the human being first. You have a statement conceptually, it's proper to give water the animals first. Now, if you look at it in terms of the actions, in terms of the history, in terms of the, in terms of the behavior, and you're just looking on that level, you can sit there and say, "Oh, Rivka, she she, she wasn't bound by the terror at that point in time. Therefore, that's why she gave the water first. Hey, that that that's that's on the historical reality section. That's on the, that's on that type of facts, which a lot of people seem to focus on. But the point is, is that on the conceptual side. You have an idea in Torah that says you're supposed to feed the animals first. Mm -hmm. You have an idea in Torah that says that a person who is a who is considered to be a good person, Rifki Menu, 
gave water to the to the to, to, to the to the um, to the human being first. So on a conceptual concept, you have a statement that says it's good to feed animals first. You have another concept, and you have a statement that says it's good to give water to to human beings first. So how do you deal with these 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 the conceptual contradiction? Now you can work it out in terms of historical reality. But the Torah, in presenting the the pristine idea, yeah. the conceptual idea, okay, that's where, where where you have an idea where you want, want may want to balance out those conceptual ideas, and that happens a lot. I'm trying I'm trying to think of other examples. It happens a lot, where 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 people get bogged down in the in the historical event, and they get bogged down in oh you know. But there were running more guys in there, or something like that, or something like that, or this idea here, and so forth, and so forth. Where basically, and and they and they start asking questions about the historical event, which may have some legitimacy. Those questions may have some legitimacy, but what's what's lost is is as a as a um, as someone who's trying to convey ideas, or something that's trying to convey ideas, and Torah trying to convey ideas. Okay. When you have ideas which may seem contradictory, how do you deal with the contradiction of those ideas? R regardless of the historical symmetry. And that's because the Torah is also, is also a, um, a pool of ideas. And there's a lot of times when people learn, learn Torah, and, and, and perhaps this comes to this, this you know, what, why, why in many ways, you know, the, the conservative way of studying Gemara is called the historical school. A lot of ways, it's a historical method of, of analyzing Gemara. Okay, historical, and and there's some legitimacy to it. I'm not trying to take away from it being totally, you know, but the truth is, in 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 standard ways of of, of learning, we're not it, we're not so caught up whether. This statement is from 100 BC or from 100 A CE or whatever. What we're looking at is there's concepts, there's ideas, and how do I work with, with these variant ideas? Now sometimes I'm forced to say there is this idea, but it wasn't existing yet. But the truth is, I I I the, the, the question that often emerges: Well, why wasn't this exist this idea? Only existed at this point in time and not at that point in time. Like for example, one of the questions that that is found is that there's an iser of of using a matseva as an altar. Okay, so the point is there's an iser to matseva. Basically, the simple understanding of Iyos to matseva is one stone used as a as a as a, as an altar, a big boulder, sacrifice on the boulder on that one big boulder. So the point is, is that's usher. Even when even when when, when bummus were, were okay, in other words, you could be mocked outside of the of the center for a crop after base Midrash, you couldn't do that. After Sheila you couldn't do that. But there were times where people were able to have their own their own personal bummus. You can't do it on a on a on a one stone. Okay. So the point is, it's brought down, I think, by Yaakov Vino that he was Makriv on him of Seva. Right? The point is, is what's the problem? Because the Abbas kept Torah. Okay, fine, the Abbas kept Torah, that's, that's the problem. But the point is, how, so how is he able to do it? Okay? The point is, though, is that if the Torah later on says you shouldn't be Makriv on him of Seva, okay, the fact that Yaakov is Makriv on him of Seva conceptually becomes the issue. What's the problem? If there's a problem with being Makrav on Seva, which the Torah says there is, so conceptually, I'm not going to get into an answer, well, Yaakov exists here. Conceptually, how did he do this? And then otherwise, and, and, and how did he do it? So the fact is, is so one of the answers is that, that because the Ode of Yavodah Zohar weren't, being, weren't, weren't Makrav on Seva, then the only time the Torah also did later on in history was, was after the Ode of Yavodah Zohar were already doing this. Okay, and that, there are certain problems with that answer, but 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 it tries to explain that, sh that 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 split from a historical perspective. But the question arises from a conceptual perspective. Okay, 
we, 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 we are looking at the concepts, and the concepts are above time. Okay, now it's true, it's not legislated, it's not this, not that, but the point is, is what is the concept? Okay, why, why do these concepts exist? Okay, and, 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 and why is it that, and, and if you see a concept in this age and a concept in that age, we, we don't answer it simply by saying different ages, but the point is, is that, okay, how do you deal with this conflict of concepts? Okay. And that's looking at the pool of information of the Torah, not from, his, not from a historical perspective, but from a pool of information of concepts and ideas okay. that are expressed through history, yeah. but, they, but, but they are basically strong conceptual ideas. And therefore, we will look at contradictions o across history. Concept right? needs to be conceptualized, so it needs to have a understanding and like a reasoning behind it. Right. Um, so, in these cases, what is what would be the you know later not having to have it and before they that, used the, it, the, it that, that that would be a question from a, from some aspect of history and so on and so forth. But but basically, be prior to that, you're already dealing with the conflict of concepts. So you have in this case over here, you can answer this question. The benefits so, of it for of having uh, just making it that way later that because, they want because it to be that way. Because the fact is is that it's it's an aspect of the overall um, the the corpus of Torah as an overall unit. Mm -hmm. In other words what's happening over here is yeah I can answer the question historically and break it up and and, and Rivka did this and the dude took Zero Jobana later and therefore it's it's a, it's, a, it's a crazy question. But there's a concept behind this. There's a reason why you feed the animals first. Okay, Rifki didn't do that. She f gave water to human being first. So, from just the ethical concept, just the idea we're supposed to walk away from it, why this is right, why this is right, if we're able to reconcile and come up and say, hey, listen, this is the, the conceptual reconciliation, that in this situation, you do this in this situation, you do that. We have a better idea of the concept as a whole. Okay. I realize ethically what she did was someone who was very thirsty gave them a drink when the the um, maybe the camels or the animals could wait mo longer. Or it just seemed you know an exception that's because of of understanding how. And uh, that's a to that, act, that, that seems know? to be like a Torah to me this answer that's saying. There was sar for the human being. Therefore, sar takes precedence. The human, human pain takes precedence. Mm -hmm. And and the idea of feeding the animal is showing compassion to animals. Uh, way be be because the human being may not be in that much pain. Right, but also just now in ge in general, why it's good to mm -hmm. always feed your animal first. <coughs> right. That Right, <coughs> and, and, and also, own place. and like also, there's, there's the other argument that, that you could say because it's the owner, the owner should recognize you should take care of the animals, and th and there's other places that say that Tanaim and Marayim always ensured that their animals and their slaves were fed first. The truth of the matter is, is that there's a concept that you know don't just take care of yourself, take yeah. care of especially the people you need to work or you, who are working for you or the animals that are working for you.